Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror thriller film, The Night House. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the widow's arrival at her lake house, accompanied by a woman from the burial of her late husband, Owen. They separate after a chat, and she heads inside the house, and trashes the documents given to her. The widow fidgets a letter, while she drowns herself in alcohol before reading it. Then she gathers the rest of the letters, and travels to the storage room, taking another brandy. She reminisces the memories with her late husband Owen, through watching their wedding day's videos. Its evident happiness presently blooms in the video. That night, she attempts to sleep, but the space on her side bothers her. Then a loud knock intervenes. She intently ignores it, yet it returns with a heavier sound. She roams while investigating downstairs, and finds nothing. Then she tries to look at the dark workroom, but stops there. When she turns her back from the office door, a black figure appears as the door slowly opens, but the figure disappears when she closes it. The next day, she walks to her car outside to go to school, when she hears the dock staircase's gate squeaking. She approaches the gate to lock it, but then she notices bloody footprints on the floorboard. Then she follows its origin, and it ends beside the parked boat on the dock. Suddenly, a gunshot erupts from the woods, startling her. The widow attends the faculty's assembly of the school. In the crowd, her blonde friend beckons to sit together. The friend assures her things will be fine if she takes a leave, but the widow reasons that she should work to occupy her time. While in her classroom, she meets a mother demanding a grade. For her, she doesn't care about work for a while, but the mother triggers her. Then the widow bluntly recounts Owen's suicide in the lake. She drives home, and encounters her neighbor ascending from the dock staircase. She approaches him, and then her neighbor mentions that he covered the rowboat. After a while, they tightly embrace and say he is just repaying her good deeds. Then the widow mentions selling the house along with the boat, despite that the place was Owen's creation. Amidst talking, she notices the footprints are gone. Then she asks him if he was shooting that morning, but it appears like she's the only one who heard it. This time, she sternly watches a video of Owen busy cutting planks as they build the lake house, but then turns it off. She collects the videotapes, and carelessly dumps them into the box, and everything that reminds her of Owen. Then she stumbles upon Owen's sketchbook, and scans the drawn floor plans. She spots odd writings like, trick it, don't listen to it. Then she reaches the house's illustration and a reversed version. She turns the page to see the first floor plan as our house, and reverse floor plan on the adjacent drawing. The widow shakes her head, then ignores it and closes the sketchbook. At night, the widow's asleep, when the stereo automatically opens and plays a song. It alarms her from sleep, and quivers at her bed while she listens. Her phone chimes a notification, showing Owen's new text, asking her to come down. Her hands tremble as she types to confront. But the number replies with a message of comfort to be not afraid. She wanders the room and calls the number. It answers, and Owen's voice directs her to look out the window. She obliges, then sees Owen afloat on the lake's surface, and then he looks at her. In the morning, she wakes up on the bathroom floor and gets nervous for a moment because the door got stuck. She budges the door, and it opens to her room. She snatches her charging phone, searches for Owen's messages, and finds nothing of last night's conversation. For assurance, she goes to her car, and brings out his phone from Owen's belongings box, but gets nothing. Then, she browses the phone gallery, smiling until she stops on a woman's side profile picture tucking her hair. At first glance, she's sure it's her until she zooms closer into the face, and realizes it's not. Doubtful, the widow shows the woman's photo in Owen's phone to her friend. The friend compliments her blouse in the picture, but the widow clarifies it's not her. Then the friend reminds her that she's simply going through hardships. Thus, the friend explains to the widow that Owen worships her so much. The friend decides to invite her for a drink to ease her mind. At this point, the widow must have thought that everything between her and Owen was good with no secrets. But things unfold in front of her that lead her to doubt who Owen is. In the bar, the widow, her friend, and two other co-teachers hang around a table. They're drinking and venting, while the widow suddenly asks about their beliefs towards ghosts. Then her friend says she believes in one. Then the widow reveals about experiencing supernatural events. Her companions awkwardly listen as she recounts her dreams, where her body's awake, but her mind isn't. The co-teacher says it's sleepwalking, and then she wonders if it's contagious because Owen suffered from it. It happened after Owen built the lake house, and it seems like it's what's happening to her now. Then her co-workers convince her that it's normal to feel someone's presence after their death, since they'd been married for 14 years. They inquired if she hadn't noticed anything wrong. 
but she points out she's the one who suffers from depression, and Owen kept them at bay. Then she tearily assumes her negativity infected the husband. The co-teacher asks if Owen has left a note for her. And to everyone's surprise, she brings out the envelope with a bloodstain on the corner addressed to her. Then she reads it. You were right, there is nothing, nothing is after you, you're safe now. Her friend drives her home that night. While in the living room, the widow opens up about her near-death experience due to a car crash. Owen was the first person to know about it. And he even disagreed on the nothingness she felt in those four minutes. Drowsy while she talks, she falls asleep on her friend's legs. While asleep, the stereo bursts open with a distorting noise, and the widow hears Owen call her name. The voice instructs her to go outside. Then she finds terrified women fleeing from nowhere to jump off the cliff. She calls them, but no response. Then the voice directs her to the boat, and sees the previous clean boat bloody. Then suddenly, a bloody footprint appears again, but nothing's there. She asks if it's Owen, and the print walks to her, and an invisible man touches her face. She's about to hold it, but she passes out, and the invisible man brings her to the boat, that sails toward the other side of the lake. The moon turns scarlet red, and the widow wakes up in front of a reversed identical lake house. She spots other women, who live like her in the house's different rooms. The voice clarifies everything she sees is just dreams. At the moment, she sees Owen hugging and kissing another woman, and strangles her, but the woman leaves. The widow enters the reversed house, and when she opens the door, she finds herself sleeping on the couch. Then that girl on the couch wakes up, and herself, who was on the door, disappears. That noon, she examines Owen's laptop, and discovers a dozen women's photos in the files identical to her. She then goes to the other side to look for a similar house, but she crosses paths with the neighbor, and asks about the house, but the neighbor says it's all forestry. The neighbor invites her instead for lunch since it's apparent she's not doing well, but she accepts it later. Lost for words, she finds a similar house, but it's unfinished, dusty, and neglected. She inspects the interior, and upstairs is a rusty metal bucket. Inside is a clay statue of a naked woman's body with an array of pins sticking out. The widow, eyes wide, loudly confronts her neighbor about Owen's secrets. Then the neighbor retells the day when Owen brought another woman to the house. That night, Owen came to the neighbor's door, crying and ashamed about his mistakes. After that, the neighbor never saw him repeat it. Then the widow asks why he never mentions it to her, and the neighbor responds that Owen told him not to. Afterward, the widow returns to her house and investigates. She then finds a book, telling about confusing and weakening dark forces through mazes, and reversed spaces with a picture of Louvre doll. Its structure is similar to Owen's clay statue that stands beside the laptop. She frustratingly slaps it, but it still stands. Then she hears heavy footsteps emerge, and follows them into the storage room. There, a man's figure forms through the pillar in the middle of the room and the furniture, but it moves when it faces her. Then she quickly calls for it to come back. She then travels to the bookstore, but the cashier serves no purpose. Then a familiar face catches her attention. She confronts the sales clerk, and realizes it's the woman on Owen's phone. She accuses her of sleeping with him even when it's not. Then the widow visits her friend to report everything she found out, and strangely, she believes the sales clerk's words. Her friend advises her to have space from all that's happening. So she goes home to pack her things, and even says goodbye to the voice. But someone knocks on the door, and she finds the sales clerk. She invites her inside, and they talk about Owen. The sales clerk recalls that Owen invited her to his home for a drink. Then Owen excitedly brought her to the other house, through the rooms, and even asked her to hold a clay statue. After that, Owen grabbed her, and they sweetly kissed until Owen started squeezing her. When the sales clerk said no, he stopped and brought her home. Then he apologized that it was his fault. The sales clerk noticed Owen's tiredness, and his word about ending it for good. The sales clerk concludes Owen felt guilty that he cheated. The sales clerk leaves, and the widow travels to the unfinished house drunk in the middle of a rainy night. She goes inside to summon the voice, but when it doesn't appear, she throws a fit, until her flashlight slips from her hand. But her foot slots in the floorboard when she retrieves it. She removes her foot, and discovers something unexpected. She forcibly opens the wood, and underneath lies the corpse of women in her dreams wrapped in plastic. She runs immediately to her house and cries out. Then she contacts her friend, but no answer. Still, she apologizes for not listening. After the call, she showers, but the stereo opens again. She rushes outside, but the stereo turns off. She breaks down, kneeling, calling, and begging Owen to come back. 
because she misses him so much. After her pretentious image of bravery, she craves his presence. All her welled emotions flood out and in the bellow. Composes herself, and sees here written in the moist mirror. She wipes it off, and then a bloody footprint appears again. She touches the void, and surprisingly feels an invisible entity. She embraces it, and allows the invisible man to caress her body centrally. Then she calls for his name, then it says, not Owen. The widow realizes what happened, and the bathroom door shuts, in front of her. When she looks at the mirror, the face of another woman appears. Then she sees and watches Owen strangle the woman, and clashes her head on the mirror. She attempts to leave, but a force drags her towards the mirror, and smashes her head into it. Then she hazily wakes up to see she teleports to the reversed house. The mirror is the way for her to see the identical house. She walks out and finds everything in reverse. There are other women inside advising her to hide. She obeys, and witnesses her husband dragging a woman's body out of the bathroom. Then a man's figure appears again, watching Owen, then it faces her. The widow bolts out of the room, but she sees Owen having an intimate moment with another woman in the reflection. The invisible figure follows the widow, until she faces it up front. The invisible figure pushes her to the ground, and drags her across the hallway. Every time they pass through a window, it portrays visions of Owen killing other women. Then she grabs on a threshold, and sees Owen crying beside a bloodied corpse. But the invisible figure throws her out and falls downstairs. In the room, the widow sees Owen's doppelganger and herself sleeping on his legs. The doppelganger explains he's the one she felt when she died, and calls himself nothing and ever since then, it follows her. He unfolds about infiltrating Owen's mind to kill her, but Owen wouldn't. Owen tricked nothing by killing other identical women. The widow, who's sleeping on the doppelganger's lap, wakes up, and it turns out to be her dream. She tries to escape, but nothing elevates her from the ground. The surroundings turn dark, and a red light shines on her. Then, nothing manipulates the widow to imitate the clay statue's pose. The movie ends with a friend visiting the widow, but only to find the house is empty. She discovers Owen's gun is gone. Then she rushes outside the lake, because the widow rides on the boat who's unfortunately, under the influence of nothing. For the widow, she only sees nothing in Owen's body, surrounded by darkness. Then nothing hands Owen's gun, while feeding her lies about nothing in life matters anymore. But right then the widow hears her friend's call, with worry weighing every shout. She realizes some people still care about her so she doesn't shoot herself. Just then, her friend swims to the boat and brings her to the dock. They embrace each other while catching their breath. In her embrace, the widow stares at a faded black figure on the boat. Then the neighbor asks what's there, and the widow says, there's nothing there. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.